What's going on, everybody? My name is Sylvan LeCue from Miami, Florida. Wise, wise, wise. And you are now listening to the Monday to Monday playlist by my man Gary V and Mike Boyd. How yeah. are you, brother? Good to see you. It's good to see you. You well? Oh, fantastic, man. Good, man. Absolutely. Yo. Oh, Yo. Nice. Nice. Jonathan. Jonathan, Jonathan, how are you, man? I'm here. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. How you been? Good. How about yourself? I've been well. <sighs> I've been well. It's oh, ugly out there, huh? Yeah, it's warm wow. outside. It's special outside. It is special yeah, outside. Thank you. It's definitely warm. You know what I mean? But, yeah. <laughs> but we're yeah, here. In a different form. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so they're in town. He leaves tomorrow. Mm -hmm. He just did a sold out show in LA, sold out show in New York. But uh, How was it? It's fantastic. Man. It's uh, it? definitely one of those moments that culminate, where your career culminates into like that place. Yeah. A lot of hard work, just really grateful taking it all in. How long were the shows? Um, I believe New York show is about an hour and 15 for my set, so overall two hours. Same thing for LA as well, maybe a little bit longer in LA. Had a little bit more lead time. So it was great, man. Good for you, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, and I think we jump right into it, but one thing is so interesting, the reason why this meeting is so important is like, he has a song, Empathy, mm -hmm. Gratitude. So. Like, Selfishness, but I think it's so in line with what Gary says about you gotta cut out your loser friend, or you gotta like, you, yeah. gotta, you gotta be selfish, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Which to like, be you, selfish. You struggle with Absolutely. that. Yeah. And you have struggled. Mm -hmm. So where are you at like now? I mean, um, I still, it's, it's, it's still something I struggle with. I don't think you ever completely, um, stop having those moments, right? Because you know, you're a caring person, so you genuinely are gonna go through it from time after time. I think it's just becoming cognitive of it and conscious of it so that you can see when it's happening. So I've gotten a lot I've gotten a lot better at it. Um, just in terms of taking time for myself and making sure that I can fill my cup, but I don't think it's something that ever goes away. You just become conscious of it and do better at it step by step by step. When it's your demeanor, right? Mm -hmm. Like either either you're giving energy or you're taking energy. So I've been thinking a lot. I, it's actually really funny we're having this conversation. I thought about it a lot this morning when I was working out on the way into work. It's like my natural default is to give. Yeah. It's why so much good has happened, but there's always a breaking point. Yeah, that's right. You know? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there's a couple different relationships right now where I'm just like, fuck, like, they're about to walk into a buzzsaw because <laughs> I, I haven't given them any indication. Like, that's the one thing I want to do a better job of. Mm -hmm. I feel like I, you know, I don't want to just default into I'm a good person and, and like, and then just, you know, one of the things I'm most embarrassed of ever is when I was a teenager in my early 20s, the way I would break up with a girl was so disrespectful and not like, just like genuinely not a man about it. Yeah. You know, I would just, Disappear, and it was easy before with no technology. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know? but 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 at the same token, it would have meant that I would have been absolutely that person that just like everything was great for nine months, and then I would just text and be like, I'm out, right? Wow. So like, I don't judge people for a period because I think it's a bad idea. But like, I think the thing that I'm constantly, even at 42, I'm like. I've got to do a better job. I'm doing a way better. I'm not anywhere close to that version, but more indicators along the way of like this isn't cool or like this isn't right. Yeah. So that it's not just like, like, fuck you. This is over. Like you know, like, what is that? Like pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered, or something. Yeah. You know, like my natural demeanor is to give so much that the other person doesn't even realize that they're becoming a hog. Yeah, I can understand that too because especially from the um especially from like the value that you place on that. It's like when you're giving and giving and giving in your mind it's like well, you know, this is what this is what I'm outputting, this is what my energy is for it. And rightfully so, you do it from the bottom of your heart, so it doesn't matter what happens, whether Correct. the relationship stands, you know, when you're giving something, it's genuinely because you want to, but at the same time you're just like you know, when something or certain situations are happening, you're like, This isn't cool and it, it, that for me, I've been one of those guys where, you know, sometimes I'll just internalize things and then when I'm ready, I'm ready. And I won't realize that nobody else has been prepared or it's kind of like a, like a blind side. As yeah, to, it's an emotional know? strength mm -hmm. that, um, that it, you know, your gift is your curse. Yeah. So listen, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Bars. You know? Mm -hmm. You know, I wouldn't trade it for anything but I, I want to be more conscious of, of it. 
um, because you know, even from VaynerMedia, as an 850 person company, you know, 18 months ago I woke up, I'm like, my company's entitled. Wow. You know, and thinking about my kids, I'm like, they're gonna be entitled. Mm-hmm. Like, emotionally. Mm-hmm. It's emotional, you know, it's, you know, and um, yeah, that's it. Like, my, com- my, my family breaks if my mom or I are not in a good mood for a minute. One minute. One minute at a dinner table of like, not cool, everyone's like, even when I did Planet of the Apps, my energy was so high and awesome, and there was some stuff going down that I wasn't pumped with, and I was like, this next pitch, I'm just gonna shut down, and the whole, like, everyone's like, what the fuck? Well, how do you <laughs> deal with that type of, like, burden, like, knowing that there's some... I'm grateful, first of all, because it's power, right? Like, nobody has leverage over me. Like, I prefer it. It's the leverage. Um, so the burden now becomes more of like, don't do wrong, like even in your full right, don't have a macro, like to me I'm never gonna feel bad about blindsight, like you're fired, what mm-hmm. the fuck? Or like yo, I don't wanna work with you like that anymore. Or like, you know what you're asking to, you know like people ask, 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 and then it's why like, you know what, nah. Yeah. Like now what? What are you gonna do about it? Cause I have all the leverage. Um, what I think I'm doing with it is just trying to be more conscious. I don't, I don't want to sandbag people. There's a fine line between, you know, look, everybody's a big boy and girl, and you expect people to, you know, when you internalize it, like what we're talking about right now, mm-hmm. what you're doing is you're hoping the other person recognizes how good it is and what <laughs> the value they're getting yeah. and why do they keep asking for more inches. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't feel bad for the person that's taking too much and hasn't figured out how to do it. I just want to be the best version of myself that I can be. <laughs> right? That sounds pretty familiar. <laughs> that's sure you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's it. That's yeah. kind of how I think about it. Gotcha. You know? Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was a yeah, great you guys question. Sound like mirrors. But uh, yeah, I wanted to. How did you guys meet? Yeah. Like, how did this start? Cause we we all know who you are, Amir. And like, you got one of the best managers in yeah, the game. Yeah, you kind of have to tell Appreciate the that. I'm honestly, I'm grateful for that, for real. Um, man, long story, like the long, long story short. Um, we actually been South by Southwest. We got introduced by a gentleman by the name of Mike Shahade, but I don't remember because, unfortunately, there was not like just that. You know, that's that world. Well, it was actually a melee. Like Aesop Mob was fighting, and you know, I had to <laughs> the games. God rest his soul. And so I like my like fatherly leader instinct was to run to see what's going on. But then fast forward a year later, he was coming to do some content with All Def Digital, and um, he just he killed it. I met we met like probably right, I wasn't on the shoot, mm-hmm. but we met right after the shoot. And then he just was he was, I don't know he was just considered he was kind. I like I liked the music. I don't he wasn't like in the apologies advance like you haven't worked on yeah. any of those records yet. We just kept in touch. He came back to do another piece of content with us and crushed it, right? Crushing it, for real. He, and I found out he actually came down from Oakland to LA on a bus. And I was pissed at my team because I was like, yo, you could have just flown him, right? But he came, you came in the same day? Yeah, I came in that day, took a bus, and then knew I could be around those artists, and then I took a bus right back. Yeah, and then like a couple months later, he was like, yo, I want to sit down. Didn't even ask like for me to manage him. But um, we just kind of hit it off, and I saw something there. And then I had to take, I had to do one more thing on my checklist, which was to see him perform. I saw him perform. It was like he put his own headliner tour together called the Loner Tour, December 2016. Yeah. And then after that, man, it was like official. So that's like. The- it's funny. The uh, bus story is super interesting. I like. Um, I've been thinking a lot about like humility and hunger. You know. I like putting letters together. Um, <laughs> I uh, like the passion and patience thing really worked for me. So, like the other day, I was like, "That's just real humility and real hunger, right?" Yeah, it really works. No, he. I mean, he was hungry. I could see it in his face too, because when I thought yeah, about people, it, people are hungry and fancy. Yeah, you know? that's right. No, no, that's yeah. right. No, no, he he was. You know, and people are humble and passive. Yeah. But if you have yeah. if you have humility and hunger. He definitely had, I mean, afterwards I thought about it, I was like, wow, this guy's going back to Oakland and he had just come from Oakland on a bus. That's I was like, part-time though, like I would have thought his performance would have been, you know, eh. Sure. Right? Like, this is after the fact, right? But I was like, yo, he killed it. Like, who are you? You know? And that's kind of how I felt. <laughs> talent. And I felt, some, I felt something, talent. you know I mean? Yeah, it's talent. It's talent. It's talent. When you have real talent, 
if it's, if it's parented right, if the environment's right, I think real talent comes, I think humility naturally comes with talent. I really do. Wow. I think people are confused. I think it's the reverse of what people think. Because if you, if, if you have talent and you're self-aware about it, you actually are humbled by it and more importantly, you feel like whether it's inevitable or you're just patient with it. Yeah. Like, like, you know, I watch people say it's just a matter of time and it's like fake bravado. Like I see it every day, just a matter of time. Like every day in social especially, right? Like just a matter of time before I, but it's, it's fake. Yeah. And then I see the version of just a matter of time and it's taking a bus. I'll do anything still. That's what, what I really like about humility is it's the core to longevity. Mm. Because you mm. never, I, I just will never go to that other spot. You know, I'm just gonna stay in this lane. It's real, co- like, no matter, like, I hear and see everything that's happening with me. Of course. I just almost weirdly don't accept it. You know? Yeah. I'm, I'm unable to, like, it, you know, and the people closest to me, like my assistants, my Babin or D-Rog, like, there's always something that I do that I can see through their eyes, uh, them saying, like, why is he doing that? It's funny you say that. <laughs> because when uh, it's funny you say that because um, I've been trying to pinpoint that emotion for a very very long time probably like the past six to seven months because things have been happening happening you know repeatedly and I think when we sold out Los Angeles um, which was our first time ever selling out a show in Los Angeles we've done tons and tons of shows and how many people um, it was 300 people go ahead we I've been in that position where I'm opening for artists at that level sure. on a consistent amount of basis so when that was happening and everybody's just like celebrating and you know, obviously I'm taking this moment in, but there's always that part of me that's just like, it's, it's, it's almost like a- There's a big delta between 300 and Madison Square Garden. Yeah. Right, for me too. Like, I'm, I get it, man. Yeah, but it's also like, but it's also like this very, it's, it's, you feel so grateful for something happening that it's almost that, it's almost like you don't want, want it to get to your head. It's humility you know and mean? hunger, man. Yeah, it's You got wild. the humility to be like, wow, this is amazing, but you're hungry and thinking like, you know what's better than 300? 30,000. Yeah, true. Like to me, like, it, it, and listen man, it's gonna get more and more intense. Like where I'm sitting right now in my life, culturally, financially, like impact, it's very high. Like I know where I'm at. And man, I don't feel any different than I did the first day I like <laughs> did a flea market when I was 14. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's almost like something is keeping me in a bubble outside of all the admiration mm-hmm. and success. I don't know what else to tell you. It's humility and hunger. Like, I'm humbled by it. I don't take it for granted. I, you know, I don't think I'm special. Mm-hmm. Like, I think it's part of the output. I think my parents are special. I think my circumstance was special. Um, and I'm just still so hungry. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Stay hungry. That's wild. And I'm, you look, and, and I think if that's foundational, I think, you know, you know, there's, I don't know who they are, mm-hmm. but somebody won four Grammys, right? And did a show two days earlier to 81,000 and felt the same way I feel right now or you feel right now. Mm-hmm. You know? I don't know. That's a good point to make right? when it comes to that type of emotion. Yeah, like if it's there, it's there, right? Like it doesn't, like, you don't, see, like I don't know. Like I don't, there's nothing I've seen. I've never been like, you made it. Or like, like I'm always like, cool. humility, I'm like yeah. cool. Like Nightline or a cover magazine or somebody cool DMs me, you know? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, you know, this is cool. Yeah, this is dope, but still, there's something else. There's okay. just never been anything like, I also think what's great about that is that um, because it's also rooted in love, right? So like love doesn't really have a price. So it doesn't matter what it is that you do. Like you can attain, you know, 20,000 buildings and you know, sell out as many concerts and win 85 Grammys and you know, be respected by your peers and do all the coolest things in the world. But the love of what you're doing is immeasurable. There, there's no price tag to it. So. It, and it's it, also unlimited. Yeah. It's definitely right? Literally. So like I think that's the thing for me, right? Right? It's unlimited. Mm-hmm. Like it, there is no, it's not, it's not even, 
to your point of measurability, there is no finish line on, for me it's impact, right? Like there is no, like what? I'm not gonna get to 7.8 billion people. Like, the Pope yeah. doesn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ doesn't do that. Right. Muhammad Ali didn't do that, Gandhi didn't do that, Martin Luther King didn't do it. Like, you're not gonna get to everybody. So to me it's almost like, well let me try. <laughs> right? So like, so like, like meaning, me, meaning, meaning, you know, like I, and again, it's about self-awareness. Like I laugh, right now I'm laughing because I know that's on, on film and people are gonna watch that and be like, what, this guy's fucking, like the ego is unbearable. It, I think people are confused. Yeah. It's, it's the reverse. It's, if you live your life in a way like that, you know, it's not that I expect to be on that pedestal or even, to be very frank, or even want that. It's that like, why not bring that much good? Yeah, yeah. that's right. You know, to, to me, why not? Mm-hmm. What's the collateral of that ambition? Because that's my life. My life is gonna be the collateral of the ambition to make that kind of impact and have that kind of legacy. Yeah. That's what my day to day is. Yeah, very true. And what's really interesting for me is unlike you and others, I didn't grow up doing something that made me think or aspiring to do something that made me think I could have that kind of impact. That's the great misunderstanding of this amazing time is I, pre-internet, would have been a good businessman, affected the thousand to five thousand people that worked with me and probably just 87 to 92 that worked close enough with me, my family, my kids, and I would have called it a day. Because I didn't do music or politics or you know, write novels or poetry. You know, I, I wasn't doing art, but, um, which is how you actually get there. Um, but I feel like how I build businesses and things of that nature is that it just, we didn't live in a world where that was document. As a matter of fact, I've been spending a lot of time looking at entrepreneurs in the 1800s. Mm. Um, they made so much of the good impact in our society. Like in the days of kings and like early countries being a stat, like, you know, it's funny, I've always not liked the narrative of businesses have a responsibility. Meaning like, not how the Republicans or Democrats looked at it. Some of it was too bullshit and yeah. just for the money, and others was, was too altruistic and not practical. But I have been trying to find that middle zone of like, what's happening with me and now? I'm spending a lot of time on it. Mm-hmm. But like, it's really cool to think about this conversation in a macro, meaning something's clearly happening where the level of conversation is just going in the right direction. Yeah, and I think it has to overall, you know, like just coming down to, especially coming down to like how we're how we're eternally feeling, and that's why, you know, that's what I try to encompass with my last album, Apologies in Advance, and what we try to encompass with our um, with our label and our company, Wise Up, is really sparking the conversation so that we can change and also alter perspective. You should put out more content that isn't music. Yeah, I agree. I think that is the gateway to your unlock. Mm-hmm. If I had music talent and put out an album right now, it would do real well. Oh, I, yeah. you know, Got a nice audience. I think, I think, you, you know, not knowing how you create music, you know, a lot of times you guys know this. I know, like I'm always like more music, more music, mainly because that's one's outlet. I think just the general thoughtfulness of your demeanor. I think you should do more of what I do. Wow. I think you should do like a 30-minute call-in show where people just call in and ask you questions like I do. Wow. Yeah, I just think that you're, you're interested and vibe towards other things that I think are important. Mm-hmm. In the same way that if you look at the genre of hip hop, people were just hip hop artists and then they became culturally relevant individuals, business mm-hmm. men and women. Um, and I just think that you have white space to have a different conversation with your audience. Mm. Agreed. So now you've got some homework. Very much so. You know, it's just, yeah. I just think it would be interesting to see if you went there. 
I think he should. I mean, he had put an email address in his profile on Twitter, and he's like, hey, if you're going through some shit, send me an email. And he legit was going through all those emails. So, I mean, yeah. but being able to do that, I mean, I think it's sincere. I think that, that I used to do that for, yeah, in 2007, 2011, that's all I did. And then I've made it more outwardly because what I realized is, cool, I can answer that kid's question or that grown-up's question, but it was a one-to-one -one thing. Meanwhile, 30% of my audience was dealing with the same shit. Yeah. I like the call of idea a lot, though. I think that's dope. that's dope. I think so, too. And I think it will be impactful. Because and I also think it's good, con it's good content. It is. You put that on YouTube, you put it in a podcast, you put it on Facebook and Instagram, and, you know, you're just building an authentic, like, all it comes down to is relationships. And there's a lot of ways to have relationships. You know, I'm just, I'm, I just really, I, I feel like I'm going through with my business content and personal content, something very similar to like putting out a hit album that like reached people. Mm-hmm. It's very true. Yeah. Yeah, and those 300 people that came to the show, it wasn't like a normal 300. Like the videos I've seen, the crowd was going like, they, they, you go so deep with your fans. Yeah. Because you're, you're putting your heart into it. Like you're going so much deeper than a lot of other emerging. So what's happening yeah. now? Um, right now, we're post um, apologies in advance. So we've been releasing records, working on another record um, that's slated for some time later this year. Don't want to, you know, spill in that aspect. Um, possibly planning another tour. Do you write? I write everything. And what is your? Do you just like if it randomly hits you, you just start writing, or you like have a set regimen? Or what's funny is I usually write all the time. And then, You're always writing. Yeah, I'm always writing. Um, usually, when I'm creating records, I usually create the record first. So I'll start by producing. I also produce all of my content. So my last album was entirely produced by myself. And I'll just start writing, and then we'll create the actual message and formula around it as we're getting halfway into the album. Every album I do or every body of work I have has to come with something that you can take away and use. It's, it has to. You know, that's my brand. You know, that's what Wise Up stands for. It's changing perspectives and opening the conversation. So that comes first, and then the music comes. The music is just the platform. I really, form. really think you should do Q and A, man. <clears throat> My point of view, I took a very different turn once I really made it about them even more. Mm. Mm. I got all sorts of things going through my head, mm -hmm. and I'm real quiet with myself, and I have unlimited content. But <sighs> when you're answering questions, when you're answering three or four questions a day, mm. five, seven, nine, three, sixteen. You're, you're in listening mode and you have a different level. I have such a different level of pulse than everybody because I'm listening. People just see the output of me talking. They don't see my 24 hours. Yeah, very true. Yeah. Right? They see me interviewing somebody. Gary, you're always talking. You're always talking. I'm like, no, no. I'm always talking when you're seeing me. My other 16 hours a day are me listening. Listening, uh, <laughs> internalizing, reflecting, and then and then they're only seeing the output. That's right. People always want to. Um, you just have a better pulse. Pretty much so. It's you know, it's things you couldn't even imagine. It's a kid calling in, telling you they're stuck on a drug because they're really just anxious, and them using a terminology to a drug you've never heard before, like just just a slang term. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to say. Just a slang term. Yeah, no, that's dope. I think it's good to know what's out there. I mean, I'm a little bit older, but like when I met somebody like Mike Boyd, like God knows how many years ago, I was like, shit, he really knows what the fuck is happening. You know, like he's paying attention. He that's right. That, like all these artists. Ear to like, the street, right? Yeah, ear to the street. And I'm like, okay, cool. You know, what's hip hop at lunch.com? Like, I'm like, what? Like, I haven't heard of half these people. Half of these people, but I'm going to all these other sites who I won't name. Who were like, oh, cool, yeah, I already saw them, I already saw them, I already saw them. And it's like, yo, wait a minute, I want to pay attention to what you're doing. Sure. Because you've got your ear to the streets, you know? And I like that discovery. I actually know I love that discovery. And, and it's huge in finding, no, that's huge you. in and this attention. world. I think the closest thing, the, the even closer to that version, once on the artist side, is one on one interaction with the audience. I gotta bounce. Yeah. Bro, thank you very much. It's a real pleasure, man. I wish you nothing but the best. Thank you so much. See you, man. Absolutely. Let me grab a photo of you guys. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Always good to see you. Yeah. Thank you again, man.